save some money on lunch and dinner. But uh, enough of the uh, marketing speak. I'm not here to sell you on Postmates. I'm here to talk to you about our use case. So um, a Visual Force Pages journey to becoming a Lightning component. Of course, behind that is a actual use case. And uh, what I want you all to do in the audience today is to think about your business and your org and something that you're going to be making this transition and kind of follow the journey along with me. Um, so to uh, set the stage briefly, uh, our primary use case for Salesforce is inside sales. So we have sellers that are calling restaurants, um, getting them interested in joining or coming onto the Postmates platform. They send out a contract, blah, blah, blah. Um, but once they get that deal done, we need to initiate onboarding. So we have this visual force page and a set of business processes um, behind that. Uh, in a nutshell, we need to ship them a tablet and we need to make them show up in our mobile app. Uh, there's some technical considerations with that. Uh, you can see them here. We need to validate that the deal is like in a state that it can be onboarded, meaning anyone can't just go to any opportunity and say, oh, I like this restaurant. I want to put them on Postmates. Um, we need to have a contract and other uh, parameters are in there. Uh, we're going to update data in Salesforce. We're going to update data in external systems. And um, the UI needs to be able to display any kind of error messaging so the user can troubleshoot. Um, this is actually uh, pretty sophisticated in that the user is able to have a conversation of sorts with this external system. It'll say, hey, I'm onboarding you. And then the system will say, you know, pick A, B, C from some kind of question, and they go back and forth. Um, so we need to have this user interaction. So that's the, the use case. Uh, when I started at Postmates, this is the experience that they had with uh, merchant onboarding on the opportunity. You have a set of buttons. They click the onboard button, and they get something like this. Uh, they got a bunch of errors. Oh, so I need to go back to the op. I need to fill out some more fields. And then they do it again. They get some more errors. And you kind of get the pattern that I'm going with here. Um, so what I wanted to highlight with this is that, if applicable, start with something you're going to work on anyway. I saw some pain in this area. And I saw an opportunity to improve just the process that it already was. And I was like, I'm going to use that and start it there. This is the journey that I'm going to take you on this afternoon. Um, we all start with the Visual Force page. And then lightning style sheets equals true. Who's familiar with this tag? Um, we're going to talk about what this does. I'll talk about why it didn't work for our uh, transition. Uh, next, we're going to talk about components inside Visual Force, is what I'm calling it. I think that this was the game changer in us successfully doing this. We'll talk about this for a good portion of the presentation. Moving on to uh, setting our components free, actually making that transition to Lightning, using the App Builder, and dropping them on the page, and how we made that transition. Um, and there, I'm going to talk about some pain points and best practices that kind of emerged out of that, and some things I would have done differently if I was going to do it all over today. And then you get to profit. Profit's beautiful. You're just writing Lightning components in Lightning. And uh, at that point, you're really kind of living the dream. All righty, visual force. I'm going to kind of skip over this part, because you're all probably here because you have Visual Force pages, right? This is the Visual Force developer guide. Feel free to check it out if uh, you need more help with Visual Force. But uh, naturally, I've heard from many, many people that Visual Force is not dead. Um, it's you know, still being maintained. Keep up to date. Keep it in your back pocket. Um, but really starting to get into the meat of the content here. So lightning style sheets equals true. Uh, on the top, you have a Visual Force page. And below it, you have the same one. It just has the tag on it. Um, as you can see, it just styles it like lightning, has a little more padding. The text is a little different. Uh, there are some caveats with using this. Uh, you need Your page needs to be on API version 39 or more current. So if you've got a really old page, you stick it on there, and it doesn't work, just go into your metadata file and update the version number. Uh, it's not supported in communities, bummer. Um, and it doesn't support all the Apex tags. There's a list of what's not supported in the documentation. Uh, finally, this was the caveat that made this uh, kind of a non-starter for us. So if you have a Visual Force page that you want to make look like Lightning, and you run it in Classic and put this on there, it still looks like Classic. And for us, the biggest uh, roadblock in moving to Lightning wasn't as much some of our custom UI piece. It was more getting the users to actually switch and use it, right? So there was this huge effort behind the scenes around configuring just the sales processes and all of the other things to enable them to actually make the switch and um, use the Lightning experience. So this didn't actually help out 
a huge amount, which is why what we did was we built lightning components, wrapped them in a Visual Force page, and showed them in Classic. This enabled us to fall forward so that when we were actually making that transition and moving to Lightning, we can just take the, the components, drag and drop them on the screen, and you're good to go. Diving back into the use case uh, for a minute, so for someone to actually onboard uh, a merchant, they do these five things. Um, and I saw some opportunity with number five. Um, I saw this as a opportunity just to uh, improve the efficiency of the workflow generally. Um, because if, say, someone's going to onboard like Brett's Burgers as a merchant, and they're going to onboard 10 of their places, they go into the op and they make 10 of these records one at a time. And I was like, oh, there's some improvement that could be done there. Uh, and so I kind of pulled that out and wanted to pause on that point briefly, that if you can, within the use case that you're imagining, identify an isolated piece of that functionality it is going to uh, benefit your development because you're going to be able to just take that little piece and knock it out and not have to worry about this, this massive project. So I pulled out number five, and I built a lightning component. Called it Bulk Create Opportunity Places. I have some really creative names. Um, the uh, big benefit in this is that it helped me learn the basics. So it's, it's got like a couple of screens, a few components, um, but just generally, as you can see with kind of what was used there, uh, I'm used, you know, you're using a lot of the standard base components, the buttons, the inputs, the icons, the data tables, all of that stuff on the screen. On the right, uh, you have the different fields laid out there. So this gave the users a brilliant experience. They loved this thing. They would click a button, they would just select the places, go next and fill out the fields, and it would make everything for them. Um, for me, I look back at this, and I think it's garbage and can do a lot better. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later in the session. Um, but a huge benefit that I got from it was learning some of those basic uh, lightning components, learning a ton about SLDS. You'll use SLDS all the time, whether it's grids to get a certain kind of layout or you know, moving your things around. Uh, SLDS really needs to... Uh, is really kind of the backbone for, obviously, all of the styling for Lightning components. Uh, Server-side controllers, uh, or calling Apex. Um, there's ways in Lightning to get around having to go to the server, but you'll end up going to the server, trust me. If you need to create multiple records at once, you're going to the server, a uh, number of other use cases. Uh, but I did hit some roadblocks. Uh, the roadblocks are highlighted in red. The default decision maker fields are actually a lookup. It's not a standard lookup component. Um, and then the other two fields are actually multi-select pick lists. And I found it cumbersome to have to kind of roll my own implementations of these components. And I didn't want to spend days building them. So I actually asked some friends and Googled around and found this wonderful website, which is lightningstrike.io. Uh, definitely jot this down. It saved me tons and tons of time. They have a bunch of just base components ready to go, well documented. It's all open source. Um, I'm a huge fan. I'm not affiliated at all, but I definitely, they deserve the shout out. They've put in some really good work there. Um, they have, you know, some of the lookups. They have these pick lists. They even have charts. They've got all kinds of stuff. Definitely check that out uh, after the session. But as I said, I built this and really learned the basics. So if there's, in the use case that you're thinking about, if you're able to pull out one piece of uh, that functionality, make sure that there's enough meat there where you're actually really going to learn the basics and the kind of key fundamentals of building Lightning components from that, that slice of the use case. If it is so narrow, so pretend I took like number one in that step, which was edit the opportunity, I'm making a little edit form there. I don't learn that much from that. I'm putting some fields on the page, some buttons and whatnot. Um, but the piece of functionality that I picked had enough going on to where I was really learning something. Um, so that's just something to think about where you can take this first one that you're going to migrate and really use it as like a true example um, to build something real, to, to learn from some mistakes as well. I wanted to talk about Apex include Lightning. Uh, for a little bit because uh, this was where I had some pain myself, um, and I don't want you all to go through that. Who's familiar with this tag? Awesome. Uh, this is what you use to run a Lightning component in a Visual Force page. So I did some Googling, and I saw that I need to uh, include the tag at the top. 
you make a div and you give it an ID. Uh, and that's where your component's going to go. And so this is a slightly modified version of the boilerplate that's, on, that's in the docs. Uh, but essentially what you're doing is in your JavaScript, you take the ID and um, I put it in a variable just for ease of swapping things in and out. And then you call lightning.use, which then calls this other function that has the variable in it. And you pass all these parameters in it, including a callback at the very bottom there to do some more stuff on that component that you rendered if you need to. And I was like, OK, this is fine. I'm going to take these 15 lines of code, stick it in my page. Um, and I was able to get my lightning component that's now wrapped in a Visual Force page because it's being rendered here to show in Classic. And I was like, awesome, got it. Writing Lightning components, tweaking around with it, it's working. And I think to myself, and I'm like, hey, um, the user's starting from the opportunity. They're creating opportunity places in bulk. When they finish, let's navigate them back to the opportunity. Right? It makes sense. So I Googled around again. I found this event that's called like, navigate to S object or something like that. I wired that all up in my component. And I uh, saved it, went back to classic, did the flow. And I didn't go back to the opportunity. And I was like, what did I mess up? So naturally, as I always do, I saved my code again. And I reloaded the page. And then it still didn't work. And I was like, what's going on? Like, it's actually broken. So I Googled some more. And in the docs, I found this. Standard Lightning events are supported in Lightning Experience and Salesforce app only, with my emphasis on there, which is really important, because that means that they are not supported in Classic. You need to roll your own event handlers, which you'll also find if you Google. So I did that. So no problem. I can do that. Um, I have some variables up at the top. You give it the UI theme. Um, and yeah, so you give it the UI theme. I made. I, felt it easier just to have a couple of other variables to remember kind of what context I'm in. And then within your JavaScript, remember that callback that we had down there that was empty? We're adding this to that now. And you tell it the name of the event. You tell it you, in the event I'm getting out the record ID. And then if I'm in Lightning, I'm doing one thing. If I'm Classic, doing another thing. You know, it worked. Uh, but now I've got a 41-line file for what is really just two. and I didn't like this. And imagine if you're handling other events and more and more events, you really just start to balloon things. Um, so what I did is I wrote a open source library. It's called Ursa. You can all use it. Um, how you use it is you, it's a static resource. It's just like a 100-line file. It pretty much just abstracts the, boiler, the boilerplate away from you. Um, you include it there. Uh, in your JavaScript, you tell Ursa what UI theme you're running in. You tell it what Lightning dependency app you've defined. You can find out more information on there and on the repo about how to do that. Um, and then you give Ursa components. And as you can see, you're just telling it the name of the component, the parameters to pass into it, and the div ID that it should go into, and then you load them. What I really like about this is all 19 lines here pertain to the program that, that I'm developing. If you're building something and you're writing something that doesn't actually pertain specifically to the thing that you're building, you should really kind of rethink that a little bit. So with this approach, you can actually tell it everything that it needs to in order to render the Lightning component. So I'd recommend either using this or a similar approach. It saved me a ton of time. And you don't have to copy and paste this thing around all the time. So Ursa. Uh, you can actually get it all the way down to 10 lines if you're a fan of comma separate or comma assigning variables in JavaScript and really wide files and things like that. But that's just kind of a fun thing. But so this currently handles these four events. Um, you can find it on the repo uh, down at the bottom. Uh, I'm open to collaboration as well too. If you wanted to handle more things or um, you wanted to behave in a more uh, optimal way, feel free. It's something that I personally don't need to use anymore because we're in Lightning. So you all can have it as my uh, gift for, for Dreamforce. Sorry, I'll go back to that slide if you guys want to take pictures. If you also probably just Google like Postmates, Salesforce, Ursa, you'll, you'll find it. Uh, I wanted to pause and talk about some takeaways from um, components inside Visual Force before we get into the, the kind of next section. So. The first thing that I did is I found something that I was going to work on anyway, and I started there. Um, I took an isolated piece out of that use case, 
and uh, I identified it as something that was meaty enough for me to build and learn the basics from building that. And so those were, that was my kind of recipe for success with just kind of getting my feet wet with building lightning components and hosting them inside Visual Force. But of course, this is the, the kind of key to it all. So components set free. So we've made that transition to Lightning. And now we're taking our Lightning components and we're dragging and dropping them onto the screen. And uh, we're rolling in Lightning and we're, we're having a good time. Uh, let's dig back into the use case slightly. So in this, and now I'm going to solve all five at the same time. Um, and Solving all five, because in, in kind of yesterday's world, remember, they're on an opportunity, they're just clicking on board, and they're just mashing the button until it works, and that's not a great user experience. Um, and so when we're thinking about solving all five, we took the opportunity to kind of rethink the workflow a little bit and found it to be a little bit more intuitive to present them with like a step-by-step -step, you know, series of actions that they need to fill out when they're going to onboard a, uh, a merchant. And so how we did that was we yeah, reimagined the user experience. We kind of rethought things a little bit to make it, a little, um, to make it more intuitive. And uh, we built Lightning Components. Imagine that. Um, what this session isn't is it's not to, I'm not going to be teaching you how to build Lightning Components here. There's a ton of great sessions at Dreamforce that will do that. I am going to share some lessons learned in just a minute um, about doing that. But naturally, we built Lightning Components. And, uh, a really interesting takeaway from when we made this actual transition was that component I showed a few slides ago. We threw the whole thing out. It didn't work at all for the new workflow um, that we had. We couldn't use a single line of code from that. But what we were able to use were the lessons learned from building that and the patterns and the strategies and the pain that we went through and actually learning how to stand that up. And then what we ended up building was in the sidebar of an opportunity, there's a little merchant onboarding tile. And they can click and open up a modal, and they get this beautiful component. Look at that. And as you can see with the green check marks, it just shows them if things are in a good spot. They can edit things on the fly. Uh, the buttons at the bottom let them go forward and back. Uh, there's a lot going on with this, and it's something that has dramatically improved their workflow and you know, all of those good things that go on with actually launching something successful. Uh, but it obviously was a really long journey to get there. And I want to share with you some of the key lessons learned that I had in actually getting, them, getting to back to that state. The first is to keep your code dry. If you're not familiar with the acronym, don't repeat yourself is what it means. Um, I'm going to give you some uh, tactical examples of how uh, I kept my code dry in building that component. Uh, second, stay up to date with Lightning Component Features. I'm sure you've heard it all week. Stay up to date. I'm going to give you a couple examples of things that actually uh, were enhanced during the course of my development of that tool that made it simpler. So just by staying up to date. And then thinking about state management. Uh, I'm going to talk about that at the end as something to kind of leave you with uh, to, to think about later. But keeping your code dry. So who's heard of the term a service component when it comes to Lightning Components? Yeah, so it's a component that contains no UI element. So in Lightning, you can actually build a component. You don't need to put any markup on it. And you can just you know, add these JavaScript files to then just call methods on it. And three common things that I found myself doing were throwing errors, calling the server, calling Apex, and uh, valid validating input fields. I did this all the time, and I'm sure you know these are like really basic things, right? So let's start with the first one, throwing errors. So you call Apex for something, you get an error. Are you going to show a toast? Are you going to show a modal? Are you going to just log the error to the console? Like, What experience are you going to do? Say you want to show a toast, no problem. You uh, do something a little like this. You define a toast event. You set some parameters. You fire that off. Wonderful. Um, say a month or two goes by, and you need to change that to show in a modal for some reason, or logging it, or what have you. Uh, you know, it's not that big of a deal to go into the file and find and replace and update these things. But I found it a little simpler of an experience to instead build a component that I just called error handler. I define an ID on that component, and you notice that this is the whole thing. There's no parameters in there. It's just component. 
And within my JavaScript, I'm able to just define a function and say throw error, and any time I get an error, I just call that, and it toasts. If I need to change it to showing a modal, just pass in modal instead of toast. Um, I encourage you to think about uh, how to kind of abstract yourself a level if you can when you find yourself doing similar actions. And this is, this is an example of doing it with throwing errors. Calling the server. Who's familiar with Aura enabled Apex? Yeah, it's a little thing that you add to Apex method so that you can call it from Lightning. So you call Apex and it works. Success. Or you get an error. Or you need to use JavaScript promises. There's some uh, caveats to doing that when you call Apex. Say you just want to call Apex like normal. Um, you've probably, if you've dabbled in Lightning at all, you've probably seen this dollar sign A in Q action at the bottom. This is like the boilerplate from the site on how to call Apex. So this isn't, again, it's not the end of the world, but it is kind of a bunch of code, and I didn't want to have to carry this around everywhere. Uh, so I took a similar approach, and I called it server action handler. I could probably work on the naming, because I ended up with the ID of just server. But uh, refactoring is lots of fun in Salesforce, obviously. Um, and within my JavaScript, I'm now able to just do this. I'm now able to say, hey, find me the server, go get me this action, and I'm going to define an on success and on error function, and then I'm just going to say server dot and queue all that stuff, and it's going to go and queue everything, and if it works, it's going to call on success, and if it doesn't, it's going to call error. If I need to do promises, it's a similar deal. Find the server, get the action, and then in queue as promise, and then doing dot then and dot catch. If you're not familiar with promises, I encourage you to check it out. Um, there's actually some good examples in the Salesforce docs on how to use promises um, that talk about some of the caveats with using dollar sign a dot get callback. Uh, so I would recommend you doing a Google for you know, lightning component JavaScript promises, and they have some good examples in there. Finally, validating input fields. Uh, my favorite Lightning component is Lightning input. Uh, as you do more and more Lightning development, you're going to come up with your own favorites as well. Uh, it's super flexible. I use it all the time. Uh, you're going to end up needing to make things required or have a character limit or look for some bad input one way or another. Uh, from the docs, again, you're doing something like this. You go find fields. You pass them into a reduce function, which what that'll do is it's going to execute this block of code on each item within that array. Uh, and in a similar vein, I didn't want to do this everywhere, so I made input field validation service. Sorry for the long name again. I just called it field validation. And this is another real example of something that I do within a Lightning component. Uh, first, I go get all my fields, get all four up top, because each field is going to be a little bit different and may need to be handled differently. Uh, for example, I'm now calling, so at, sorry, at the very top, I go to find a variable called validate, which is an instance of that service component. And so down here in the bottom highlighted, uh, I'm calling validate.strike fields and validate.lightning input fields. So remember from a few slides ago, I you know, was borrowing some of those strike components and I use them all over the place. What do you know? They validate a little different than the input fields do. And there's other components that validate different. So you need to handle different cases. So what uh, I ended up doing was building the service component and I just pass it in an array of these different types of fields and it's going to return true or it's going to return false depending on what happened. Before it returns, it's going to show the error messages or clear the error message if it worked. Uh, so this is another pattern that I found really successful because I can make a really readable file this way and you separate the concerns to where this component is only concerned with validating these fields and your input validation service is only concerned with writing validation for different types of input fields. So that's just another pattern to take away. I uh, want to talk about, uh, to kind of wrap up, and we're going to have some time for some questions here, too, if people do have uh, real examples to bring up and, um, and ask about. But the first is to keep up with Lightning component features. So uh, these two components, input and data table, got improved during my development lifecycle and saved me a ton of time. There were some validation improvements, and there were a number of things that happened. Uh, that I started rolling on my own, but Salesforce made a feature for it, and I was like, awesome. But I wouldn't have known that unless I kept up. So I highly encourage you to keep up with features generally. 
Uh, and there's new components that are being created all the time. The top two I use all the time. You should definitely use these in your Lightning components, the notifications and overlay libraries. They allow you to easily show toasts or modals or different messages to your users. Uh, and finally, the EMP API and the map. Uh, the EMP API, if you're not familiar yet, it allows you to essentially kind of read from events that may be streaming platform events or what have you. Um, and so if a platform event fires off, you can show a toast or take some action. Um, and the map is an interesting one. Who's, who's tried to frame Google Maps into Salesforce before? It's a little quirky with the everything involved. There's a lot of blog posts that show you how to do it. I've had to do it, and it was a challenge, but I'm really excited for this component to bring a similar sort of experience. Uh, finally, think about state management. Um, this is something that I really, really, really wish that I would have done before I started doing any of this Lightning component development. Because as you saw from the screenshot that I had there, you end up with a component with things nested several layers deep, and you've got stuff all over the place. Like, how do you manage going from step four to five and then back to four, keeping all your parameters and attributes in line? Um, so what I did is actually just did research on what other technologies are doing. I went and studied Flux and Redux and tried to borrow from the patterns that they already have because they've been around, you know, for, uh, I mean, Lightning's only, Lightning development is, is a relatively young technology space, I would say, compared to other just JavaScript frameworks and things. Uh, so I went and studied what they did, and then uh, kind of borrowing from the, the Medium article down here at the bottom, um, I follow this pattern of having container components and presentational components. So you have a container component up top that uh, pertains to uh, how something works, and then you have a presentational component that pertains to how something looks. A simple example is the green check mark that I have. It just has some if stuff in there, and it shows green if it's good and red if it's bad. Uh, but up top, it's going to contain that logic. Um, so th that's just something to think about. I think that it's something that you'll come into more naturally as you do more Lightning development. But I did just want to throw that out there as a nugget to think about and take away to do some further research on uh, is state management. So with that, we do have about 10 minutes left as well, too. So if people have any specific questions or topics, I'm happy to take them now. Cool. All right. Happy Dreamforce.